Preparations for Starship 6 integrated flight test are in full swing at Starbase. Engineers are currently readying Ship 31 and Booster 13 for the mission. By making design adjustments and software updates based on data collected from Flight 5 to ensure improved performance for Flight 6, both vehicles are expected to be rolled out to the launch site shortly, where they will undergo full stack testing. A successful full stack test will set the stage for Starship 6 integrated flight test. SpaceX has confirmed that Flight 6 is scheduled for Monday, November 18, with a launch window opening at 4 p.m. Central Time. Also, FAA issued a notice to airmen on November 6, signaling a potential Starship launch between the 18th and 26th. If launched on November 18, Flight 6 will occur just 36 days after Flight 5, setting a new record for the shortest time between two Starship launches. SpaceX's website also shared details on the Flight 6 mission objectives and vehicle modifications. This flight will once again attempt to catch the booster upon descent, helping SpaceX collect more data and advance its reusable launch system. As with previous tests, Starship's upper stage will follow a suborbital trajectory with splashdown targeted in the Indian Ocean. This time, an in-space Raptor engine burn will be performed while Starship is in orbit. The burn is designed to test Starship's ability to relight in space and perform a deorbit maneuver, an essential capability for future orbital missions. This test was initially planned for previous flights but was postponed due to technical challenges. The ship will also intentionally fly at a higher angle of attack during re-entry. This risky maneuver will push the flaps to their limits, testing their performance under extreme conditions. The goal is to gather crucial data on landing profiles and assess whether the ship can survive high-speed re-entry. Finally, for this mission, SpaceX has adjusted the launch window to late afternoon at Starbase, allowing for a daylight re-entry over the Indian Ocean. This timing improves visibility for observations, enhancing data collection during descent and splashdown. Flight 6 will test the new heat shield tiles and the secondary thermal protection material placed beneath them. The ship will also have entire sections of heat shield tiles removed on either side of the ship in locations being studied for catch-enabling hardware on future vehicles. If these unshielded areas survive re-entry, SpaceX can potentially forego tiles in these locations, making room for specialized hardware that will enable direct catching of the upper stage with a launch tower. Additional hardware upgrades in Flight 6 include improved redundancy in booster propulsion systems, increased structural reinforcement in key areas, and optimized propellant offloading procedures after a successful booster catch. SpaceX has also refined software controls and adjusted commit criteria for the booster's launch and recovery. Flight 6 will mark the final mission for the Starship Block 1 variant as SpaceX prepares to transition to the next generation of Block 2 Starships for future launches. Alongside vehicle preparations, the launch pad infrastructure is also undergoing fixes and upgrades. Teams are repairing and reinforcing the launch mount, tower, and chopsticks, as well as addressing minor wear sustained during Flight 5. The bumper pads, which had experienced minor wear and tear during the booster's catch attempt in Flight 5, have been repaired lately. In parallel with these repairs, SpaceX teams are conducting actuation tests and practicing booster catches using chopsticks. These tests ensure all systems are fully functional and allow engineers to make adjustments as necessary. More catch practice tests with the launch tower arms are expected in the coming days as Flight 6 approaches. us. The construction of the second orbital launch pad is progressing swiftly at the launch site. The flame trench is taking shape as rebar is installed along the trench walls, while excavation continues to shape the trench. SpaceX appears to be constructing a double bucket flame trench for Pad B with dual exhaust pathways. This setup is intended to channel the booster exhaust generated at liftoff away from the rocket, thereby reducing both thermal and acoustic stress on the launch structure and Starship. At the Sanchez site, teams continue assembling the second layer of the launch mount atop the base structure. All four corner pieces of the second layer were installed this past week, with work underway to install the remaining pieces. This layer will incorporate the 20 booster quick disconnect mechanisms designed to supply high pressure gases to the engine preburners, initiating the spin up of their turbo pumps for startup. The launch mount stop deck will feature a water deluge system that releases large amounts of water onto the pad right before engine ignition. This system helps absorb heat and dampen the acoustic energy created during liftoff, protecting the structure and surroundings. This 3D animation of the Pad B launch mount, produced by Animatoro, illustrates how each launch mount component will be assembled layer by layer. The animation provides a clear view of all three layers of the structure and their sequential installation. Components for the Pad B booster quick disconnect mechanism have also started arriving at the build site. 
The launch tower arms, carriage, and ship quick disconnect arm parts are already at the Sanchez site and are being prepared for installation. However, visuals of the booster and ship QD panels, which handle the transfer of propellants, gases, electric power, and communication signals to the rocket, have yet to be revealed. Earlier this year, SpaceX demolished the Starship launch mount legs at Kennedy Space Center's Pad 39A to redesign and upgrade the system. Recent observations suggest that the company may be in the process of constructing a new launch mount for LC-39A. Satellite imagery of Hangar M shows large plates outside the facility that match the exact dimensions of the water deluge plates designed for Starbase's Pad B. Alongside this, you can see an old style OLM which was originally designed for LC-39A. This will be scrapped soon. Additionally, components for trench construction have appeared at the LC-39A flame trench location, which were absent a month earlier. These signs indicate that SpaceX is resuming work on Pad 39A, likely constructing a launch pad that aligns closely with the design now being finalized at Starbase. In other developments, Starship 33 has returned to the build site following its cryogenic proof test campaign at the Massey's site. The ship was moved into Megabay 2 and placed on an engine installation stand preparing it for engine installation. Ship 33 will undergo static fire testing once it is outfitted with all six Raptor engines. It's still uncertain whether Ship 33 will be fitted with SpaceX's latest Raptor 3 engines, which are currently undergoing testing at the McGregor facility in Texas. Ship 33 has been assigned for the 7th integrated flight test alongside Booster 14, with a launch anticipated in early 2025. Meanwhile, teams continue stacking Starship 34 inside Megabay 2. The oxygen tank section stacking is progressing, and the downcomer that supplies methane to the ship's three inner sea level engines has been installed lately. Ship 34, along with all future Block 2 starships, will incorporate an enhanced downcomer design to improve fuel delivery to the engines. For an in depth look at these and other Block 2 starship upgrades, check out my previous videos linked in the description. A Raptor engine exploded during testing at SpaceX's McGregor test facility this past week. The test, conducted on a vertical test stand, involved a Raptor V3 engine, the latest in SpaceX's series of advanced rocket engines. The explosion occurred about 12 seconds after ignition. While the exact cause remains unknown, SpaceX may have pushed the engine to its limits to identify potential failure points and enhance its design. Testing to failure is a common engineering approach, particularly for critical components like rocket engines, as it reveals weak areas and enables engineers to improve durability and reliability. This test followed SpaceX's rapid real light tests this past month, where a series of back-to-back -back engine tests were conducted on a test stand, with 34 of them occurring within just 10 minutes. Such rapid testing assesses the engine's restart capabilities and performance under rapid thermal cycles, essential for missions requiring multiple ignitions, like landings and orbital adjustments. The tests could also be simulating engine failure scenarios, focusing on quick detection and restart after a fault, and identifying any potential design flaws or weaknesses. Ultimately, these rigorous tests on the Raptor V3 provide SpaceX with invaluable data to refine and strengthen the engine, ensuring it meets the demands of future Starship missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. In a recent Spaceflight Now interview, Dr. Ken Chinatsky, Deputy Program Manager of NASA's Human Landing System, shared major updates on NASA's work with SpaceX's Starship for the Artemis missions. Here's a breakdown of the details revealed in the interview. NASA and SpaceX are targeting March 2025 to initiate the ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer demonstration campaign, aiming for completion by mid-2025. This test will verify the process of refueling Starship in orbit. Earlier this year, during Starship Flight 3, SpaceX conducted an internal propellant transfer demonstration, successfully moving 10 metric tons of liquid oxygen between the main and header tanks. The upcoming ship-to-ship -ship transfer will be considerably more complex, as it requires two ships to dock in orbit. Successfully achieving in-space refueling next year will be a significant milestone, validating essential technology for the Artemis missions. NASA and SpaceX also plan to ramp up launch frequency, aiming for a bi-weekly cadence. Initially, launches will take place at the two starbase pads, with Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center joining later. Once both Starbase and Kennedy are in full operation, this setup will enable weekly Starship launches across both sites. This increased cadence will enhance the reliability of the HLS program, supporting future crewed and cargo missions as demand grows. Dr. Chinatsky emphasized NASA's technical support in refining Starship for lunar operations.
NASA's developing micrometeoroid and orbital debris thermal tiles for starships, which will keep the propellants cool and protect the tanks from debris and harsh lunar conditions. Additionally, NASA helped SpaceX improve Starship's cryogenic systems, specifically upgrading valves and internal cooling components to handle propellant storage and management in deep space. These enhancements are crucial for meeting the standards set by NASA for the lunar Starship. SpaceX's contract with NASA includes 27 system requirements that must be met before Starship can be certified for its role in the Artemis program. SpaceX is expected to deliver a design update for Starship this month followed by an in-depth critical design review in summer 2025. These reviews will determine if the Starship design meets all of NASA's requirements for the human landing system. Chinatsky stated that the timeline for these developments appears to be on track, and NASA has not encountered any significant roadblocks till now. He added that progress is on track for the uncrewed HLS Starship landing demonstration mission, which is a prerequisite for Artemis III. If the demo mission is successful, Starship will then proceed to land astronauts on the lunar surface in Artemis III, scheduled for 2026. To test and ensure that Starship screw modules meet NASA standards, SpaceX has created mock-ups of key components of the HLS Starship at Starbase. Let's explain the interior design details revealed by Dr. Chinatsky with the help of graphics from the space engineer. The top floor serves as the operational hub, featuring the crew's sleeping quarters, a storage area, and a command center with four control seats. This setup is similar to SpaceX's Crew Dragon, with seats facing touch screens that display mission critical information necessary for monitoring Starship systems and managing lunar maneuvers. The HLS ship can accommodate 20 crew quarters arranged horizontally, similar to the ISS bunk setup, but offering more flexibility. This design allows for accommodating a sizable crew comfortably, which is essential for long duration missions. Beneath the main deck is the life support section which houses the environmental control and life support system that provides breathable air, regulates temperature, removes contaminants, and manages water resources to ensure a habitable environment for the crew. One important aspect to note is that this current layout is very much a prototype, designed to demonstrate a few key HLS functionalities rather than serve as the final version. Monthly meetings between NASA astronauts and SpaceX engineers are held to review and refine the interior layout and design, making sure that the spacecraft will meet the needs of future lunar crews. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. SpaceX successfully launched its 31st Commercial Resupply Services mission to the International Space Station aboard a Falcon 9 rocket from Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center on November 4. Approximately nine minutes after liftoff, the Cargo Dragon spacecraft separated from the Falcon 9 upper stage and began its journey to the ISS. The mission carried over 2,700 kilograms of cargo, including scientific experiments, equipment, and supplies essential for the ongoing research aboard the ISS. One notable experiment on board, the Coronal Diagnostic Experiment, or CODEX, is a solar coronagraph that will be mounted on the ISS to study solar wind and its impacts on Earth. It aims to enhance our understanding of solar phenomena that affect space weather. Another significant experiment, Artemis, investigates how Antarctic moss reacts to microgravity and radiation conditions in space. This study could provide valuable insights into bioregenerative life support systems, potentially helping to sustain future long-duration missions. The European Space Agency contributed the Euromaterial Aging Investigation to study how certain materials age while exposed to space. Predicting how materials will perform in space is crucial for the design and longevity of spacecraft and other technologies used in extraterrestrial exploration. Additionally, the cold welding experiment, developed by Nanolab Astrobeat, explores cold welding techniques to repair internal hull perforations. This experiment could be vital for future missions, as it tests a method to repair spacecraft from the inside, offering a potential solution for hull damage in deep space. The CRS-31 mission also carries many more science investigations and experiments which you can explore through the link in the description. After a journey lasting about 13 hours, Cargo Dragon arrived at the ISS on November 5th and docked at the forward port of the Harmony module. It will remain attached to the ISS for around one month, during which crew members will unload supplies and set up the experiments for ongoing research. Notably, on November 8, the spacecraft will conduct a reboost maneuver to adjust the station's orbit, a task traditionally performed by Russian Progress spacecraft. This maneuver, using Dragon's Draco thrusters, will last about 12 and a half minutes and marks the first time a Dragon spacecraft performs a reboost. 
The success of this reboost will provide SpaceX with essential data for future applications, particularly in the development of the ISSD orbit vehicle. This specialized version of the Dragon spacecraft is intended to safely deorbit the ISS following its planned retirement around 2030. For a deeper dive into the ISS deorbit vehicle, check out my previous videos link in the description. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.